Hi everybody, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at validation. Specifically validating that the required data is in your objects before you actually push a build live. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a quick example of a semi-realistic scenario that may occur in your games. I'm going to show you how to validate that information and right at the end of the video, I'm actually going to show you a way that you can stop the build if that validation fails. So before we get into it, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description. Go follow him on Twitter and check out his website, see what he's up to, get the updates. And I also just want to thank everyone supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. Okay, so let's take a look at what I have in my project. I have an item script, which is a scriptable object, just like you'd always find in any project. I have a resources folder with three items. Now these items have an ID and a name. See we have consumable one, and that's a health portion. Consumable two, that's a mana portion. And then sword, whoever created sword has forgot to put in the item ID. Bruh. Now if I was to build this game, there's a very good chance that that build will pass, everything will look all right, We'll roll the game out, the second somebody picks up a sword, it's no ID, so we can't actually find it, the game crashes, the entire world falls apart and crumbles. So what if we had a method of stopping this from happening? Well we do, or we're going to do by the end of this video. And we're only going to need a couple of scripts. Now these scripts are going to be for the editor only, so what we need to do, we need to create a folder called editor. Now editor's a reserved folder name, Anything that's inside it won't be compiled when you build your game. So this is perfect for what we need. So we'll create a new c -sharp script in here, and we'll just call this validations. You can call it whatever you like. And I'll open this up in Visual Studio. Okay, so we're going to make this into an editor script, because we want to be able to run this validation without having to build our game. So we can run these as and when we like. So I'm going to get rid of the start and update, I'm going to get rid of the two system namespaces, but I'm also going to be using Unity Editor. And what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to create a single method, that's going to be a public static void, we're not returning anything for now, and I'll just call this validate items. Now we're going to want to add a menu item for this so we can call it whenever we like. So I'll add menu item above the class declaration. And if you don't have this, you need to remember to import Unity Editor. That's where this comes from. And then in the parentheses, what we're going to do, we're going to give this its actual path name. I'm going to call this validation slash validate items. And if I'm typing slightly slower than usual, I do apologise. I've got used to actually using a Mac keyboard and coming back to PC is killing me a little bit. <laughs> okay, so just to show you what this does, if we go back to Unity and let it compile, we can see that up in our toolbar at the top, we have a validation tab now, which has validate items. Currently, that does absolutely nothing. But what we want to do with that we want to go through every one of our items and we want to flag if there's something missing. For example, if the ID is missing. We'll go back to validate items. So we'll start by creating an item array. That's an array of any object that you are trying to validate. This is just item in this example. And I'm going to call that all items. We'll set that equal to resources.loadAll type of item inside of our items folder. Now I do have a full video on the resources folder if you're interested in that. I'll pop a link up in the top right corner for you right now. But all that's going to do, that's going to go through the resources folder, find everything inside of the folder items that is of type item. Now that's what we're interested in. And what we can do, we can do anything we like with that array now. So for example, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to check if all items dot length is equal to zero then we don't have any items in there so that's obviously a problem so we can put out a debug log dot log warning and we can put in no items found 
and that'll catch the first error for us. But what about if we have items and we want to validate what's in them? Well, we can do a for each loop and we'll do a for each item, i in all items. And then for each one, what we'll do, we'll check if i dot id, and we can do this through length. You can do this any way that you like. This is just purely an example. So if the length of the ID is less than four, what I want to do, I want to put out a debug.log warning again, so I'll just copy this down. But this time, what I want to do, I want to actually tell you what item is at fault. So I'm going to use string interpolation here so I can keep it all neat and tidy without all those plus symbols. I'm going to put out item dot i name so that's the name the actual file name of the item that we're currently on has an id shorter than four and then what we can do to make this a little bit more user friendly is the second parameter of our debug.log we can pass in the item itself so if this it if this error fires then we're going to be able to click inside the console and it'll highlight the actual game object in our project that's at fault. And we can do one more in here as well while we're here. So we can check if i.itemNames.length is less than four again. We'll leave it at four. And then we'll just change that message. Item, item name has a name shorter than four characters. And we'll put characters up there as well actually, just so we know exactly what we're doing. And really, that should be it. So if we pop back over to Unity and we can run our validation script again, we should get the error saying that a sword has less than four characters in the ID field. And we do. Right there. And just to show you that that works, if I actually give it an ID and then we rerun the validation, I'll clear that down first. We see we get absolutely nothing. So what we could do is actually put out a success message or a completed message rather. So we can do a debug.log, just log this time. We're not warning the user of anything. Validation complete. So then if we were to rerun that again, we get a validation complete message. So we know it's actually successfully run, but we've not found any errors. But what about if we want to run this automatically whenever we build our game because we never want an id to be completely empty in a built game so we want to stop that build happening well just for the test i'm going to delete that weapon id again and i'm going to create a new script inside the editor folder again now this has to be inside the editor folder and i'm going to call it build validation and we're going to open this up in visual studio now this script is probably going to be quite different than most you've seen before. We're going to get rid of our start and update. We're going to get rid of all three of our current namespaces. And we're going to replace those with using unityeditor.build and using unityeditor.build.reporting. And then instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we're going to implement the interface I pre-process build with report and that's going to give us a little error because we're not actually implementing the methods that this interface needs so we can click our little IntelliSense light bulb and implement the interface and that'll give us a method and also an integer now we'll tackle the integer first because this is quite simple all this is is if we have multiple of this pre-process build with report this is the order in which these will fire. Now we only have one, so I'm just gonna give it the property of zero. So we're gonna to need to make it a property, so I'll add in a curly bracket, we'll do a getter, and inside that we're just gonna return zero. Simple as that. And then we can go on to our method. So we'll remove the pre-populated error, and in here we wanna actually run our validation scripts, our validate items. But currently, this doesn't actually tell us anything because we're not returning anything. So let's go in and we can change this to return a bool. And then whenever we actually have an error, we're going to return false. So that'll be there, there, and there. And then right at the end, 
if we make it to the end, we're going to return true. So now we can use this method and we'll actually get a true or false value back as to whether or not the validation is passed. So back inside our build validation script, we can check if validations dot validate items is equal to false. So we've failed our validation. We want to stop the build from continuing. And the way we can do that is we can throw a new build failed exception and then we can pass in a message. That's quite possibly one of the worst error messages I've ever written in my life, but it'll do for now. So now, on preprocess build should automatically fire whenever we press the build button in Unity. And we're going to run our validation. So now our sword doesn't have an ID, so we should fail validation. So let's try this out. So I'll go to build settings, build, and just call it test build because I know it's going to fail. And there we have it. The build stopped almost instantly. We have a warning saying that item sword has an ID shorter than four characters. If I click that, we see that sword gets highlighted here. So we know that we can actually go in and change that. So if I go ahead and try and rebuild this, we should see that this starts building successfully this time. And it does, but I don't have the JDK installed on my desktop because this isn't the kit that I use to build my own games. Brilliant. But you can actually see that this is working. We've had our validation complete message. So we've passed our validation. So I hope that's been useful for you guys. I only recently found out about this stopping the build if your validation actually finishes and it got me really excited because I'm a massive nerd. I hope it helps. I hope you've learned something, so I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more bites as Unity hints and tips.